This channel is supported by my online courses at saltstrong.com slash Skinner, as well as my books, including my new book, Fishing the Edge, Techniques and Tales from Surf, Boat, and Kayak. You can learn more at johnskinnerfishing.com and on Amazon. Good morning. Yeah, a lot to do today. Um, so I've got company coming. I need to get some fish for dinner, and I'll take whatever um, it is I can keep, which is unusual because I don't usually keep fish. Uh, I also brought some shrimp along. I have a few crabs. I'm going to compare shrimp versus crabs for sheep's head. Um, if, I've never kept a redfish in my life. If I get a slot red, I'm going to keep one today. Um, so I'm going to go fool around and uh, experiment a little bit and hopefully come home with a, a, a decent uh, batch of fish for dinner. So we'll see. Yeah, another thing I want to accomplish this trip is it's my daughter that's coming to town. I want to find a nice easy spot um, for her to catch some decent fish. So that's also on the list. Yeah, I, I like never buy shrimp. I've only got a few crabs left. I, I just don't have a lot of crab bait. And uh, hey, I want to get some sheep's head as, as part of that dinner. And um, so I'll bring some shrimp. I do not have a lot of confidence in shrimp for sheep's head. Yeah, I know you can catch them. But if you've ever compared shrimp to mud crabs, the mud crabs, in my experience, just crush the shrimp. But we'll see. You know what? I'll throw into the docks, see what I can catch over here. And I'm starting with... Um, a shrimp on a jig head. And whatever it is I'm going to catch, I'm going to fillet up and cook on this video. And I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description, including the cooking stuff. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. A drum. Yeah, they need to be 14 inches, and he measured uh, about 13 and change, so can't eat that one. And that was on shrimp. The next cast I made with crab, and I caught a, a very similar fish. Um, I released that one too. And here's another crab toss. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Perfect. Right. Here's something to eat. All right, first important step of preparing fish you're going to eat bleed them out. Uh, they'll die faster. You get all the blood. Just see that blood pouring out. Uh, and uh, yeah, the fillet is going to come out so much cleaner and we're going to get to see that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, within a couple seconds, I mean, you know, look how much blood is in that bucket. So uh, you want that in the bucket, not in the fillet. So this was the first sheep's head trip of the winter where I didn't get them. Um, but something's going on and it's not obvious to me quite yet, but it's going to get obvious. Uh, pretty soon but all right hey um, uh, plenty of other things to fish for and uh, certainly trout redfish um, you know, those are other things that can make up dinner so I'm gonna work this little uh, piece of water here and uh, then I'm gonna move on to a spot that's been producing some decent redfish Oh, got something here. That's an eater trout right there. Probably gonna lose him. That's my be close to the 19. Take that. Okay. Okay, 
would be nice if you were less than 19, but that's not even close to happening. All right, so you're my one over. Okay, so there's a 15 to 19 inch slot on these fish. I can keep three. One can be over 19 inches, so that's one that's over 19 inches. Now, uh, any others that I want to keep have to be between 15 and 19. Okay, I've made a move, and now it's going to become obvious why I'm struggling to catch some fish. Yeah, this is bad stuff here. I can't tell what that is. Ah, uh, trout. That sucks. Just a piece of foam here. No? No? Pinfish. Mostly I'm seeing catfish, but I've seen there's another pinfish, seen a couple trout. It's not good. Now here's the thing, you know, I don't know where they're coming from. There's a, you know, inlet over there, so this stuff could be drifting in from the Gulf. Doesn't necessarily mean they were dropping here. I've seen um, some fish here. Boy, I hate to see in the, the trout. Alright, so this is uh, southwest Florida and there's been uh, red tide for a couple of weeks, but it's not been really bad. Clearly it's gotten worse. I'm only a few miles away from uh, where I started and uh, yeah, there's a fair number of dead fish here. <clears throat> um, my hope is that uh, you know they've died somewhere else, but I'm going to find that that's not the case. Look at this trout. He's struggling. So this was one of several that I saw doing this. I mean, so clearly these fish are dying right here. So um, yeah, I, uh, I'm not going to keep fishing these waters. I'm going to have to get out of here, head back towards uh, where it was cleaner and there weren't any dead fish. Gotta get the out of here. Yeah, so I gotta bail out of this place. Um, so when I get back to cleaner water, uh, everything I've read, it sh should be no issue worrying about keeping fish there to eat as long as they're filleted, which of course they will be. Um, and yeah, now I've run a f you know several miles and um, Hey, you know, if, if the fish are lively and hitting, then uh, I'm going to assume the red tide is nowhere near as bad here and that they're going to be okay to eat. The more noticeable problem for humans is um, respiratory, especially chopping that stuff up in a prop wash. Especially if you have asthma, which I do. <laughs> I'll live. Here's a slot trout. Come on. That's the right size. All right, he's hooked well. That looks like he's going to be under 19. That's what I want. Perfect, right in there, perfect. So with the red tide, uh, the, the fish can tend to be lethargic. So I've switched over to gulp because um, yeah, I can work that slower and you know they basically can just eat that stuff. So yeah, gonna gonna try that. Five inch jerk shad on a 1 16th ounce 3.0 swim bait hook. Oh, got something. Yep, slot trout. That's what I'm looking for. Uh-oh, he might be over. Darn, he's not even close. He's way over. Bye, lucky you. Or if you focus on my left hand, you're going to be able to see what the retrieve speed looks like. You can see my cranking hand um, and the presentation that, you know, it is slowed down a bit, little pauses in there, basically trying to get that nice darting action back and forth on that jerk shed.
one over slot, I think. That's a big trout. Wish I caught him first. All right, just need one more of these uh, to complete the dinner that I want, and uh, but it's got to be less than 19. It's got to be between 15 and 19 inches. I don't have the raptor anchor down, and so I'm blowing right towards them. I, I want to um, get it down. I keep grabbing the wrong remote. This, I think, could. This is. That's a slat, it looks like. He's got one with him. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's a slot right there. Yeah, uh, see? Good thing I netted. <laughs> I don't think so. I think he's going to be right in there. Easy. Yep. It's like 18 and a half. Yep. No problem. And using what I learned on that trip, I got my daughter out a couple of days later to see if I could get her on a few fish. I'm going to drop this back to see if I can get you to cast kind of like underneath that blue thing over there. Looks like that water is moving in along that point. So you just have to watch actually not to cast straight at that overhanging thing. So that's really all you need to do is not cast right at that. And it's got some stuff hanging off it so you can tell where it is. Got him? Oh yeah, good one, good one. That's a beauty. Yeah. So did you, f oh, oh, you got him, you got him. Just keep the rod bent. Did you feel the niche? Oh, that's a beautiful trout, wow. Let's get that one. So did you uh, feel that initial hit? Wow, nice fish. That's a beautiful nice. trout, wow. Oh yeah, but no, it's a, that's a that's a big one. It's a it's a big trout. Like, oh, she visits just when the fishing's getting tough with the red tide. But uh, oh, there's a good one. Yeah, like I told you, you won't catch as many here, but what you're gonna get is all good, good ones. There's never just one. There's definitely gonna be some more there. see where that went. Oh, good, 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 perfect. That's where you want to be. Get a hit? You got him? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh that one's big too. Maybe it's using the John Skinner rod that Oh, you don't bring him into the drunk. Very nice. These are really, really good ones. He's not as big as the other. So don't they remind you of something? Of another fish you're familiar with? Weak fish, come on. They look exactly like weak fish. They even have the same teeth. See that opening in there? You want to cast in towards that open. Actually, this is not badly positioned. This whole stretch between that bush and that stick, you 
you want to throw in there. I think you're not going to be able to reach the... So I think you can just almost throw as far as you can. You can... Right, well, you can hit that. I mean, that's a big target. Anywhere in there is fair game. And... Okay, yeah, you want to get out far, but that's okay. Just, I'm going to let you just make the first bunch of casts here, and we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. The thing is... This is a spot where I go looking to catch one fish, and two would be a lot, but they, they're quality fish. You know, I've caught big snook here, I've caught nice redfish. It's, it's more of a snook and redfish spot. I have caught trout, but this is more, this is a, a quality fish spot. And especially with this much water here. Oh yeah, that's, that's real good, as far as, it, as you can get. You got a fish. Yep. You know what? And that's a trout. Wow, that's a big trout. I don't usually get them. I don't get too many here. I usually get and the motor's not running, so you're in good shape. Excellent. Oh, you're doing well. Oh, that's a beauty. That's about as big as the first one. Nice. Mm, nice. Alright, there's my guiding effort for the winter. So uh, alright, let's uh, get to the cut and cook. All right, I'm not a fillet pro, but I get it done. I really should have sharpened the knife before I started, but it, it's in pretty good shape. Um, and I, the, the sheep's head gets filleted exactly the same way. So you just have to be careful not to uh, go through the skin with this step, especially with the trout. The skin is kind of thin. Uh, yeah, you're probably not going to go through skin with a sheep's head. Okay, people are always asking how I prepare and cook fish, and I don't want to do anything that's complicated. Um, the first thing is, you've seen me fillet them, but um, I just cut the fillets off, and one thing I always do is I get these sections of red meat. Now, these two fillets are the sheep's head, and this is the trout. And so yeah, the sheep's have, have a little bit of red meat, and I'm gonna cut that bit out, and there's a little bit of meat here, and you know, you can dip that in the uh, batter, and that's gonna be just fine too. Now the trout is pretty surprising um, to me that there's hardly any red meat on this at all. Um, all right, I'll, I'll cut through here, but it's almost not necessary. I gotta say, out of all the fish that I've filleted, and that includes uh, fluke, otherwise known as flounder, um, this might be the fish that's got the least amount of red meat. So I'm always gonna trim the fillets up and you know get stuff that looks like this nice and clean and white and one of the reasons this is clean and white and not bloody at all is because I bled the fish out in the boat as soon as I caught them so um, pretty much I'm going to go through and, and take the fish and do what you just saw in this case here there's absolutely this is uh, the front section of the trout fillet there is not any um white uh, red meat on this at all. I'm just going to cut it into some small chunks and just like that and put these in the batter. So I'm going to go through and then I'll, I'll come back uh, to the batter step in a minute. Okay, this is all cut up now and I forgot to mention sharpening the knife. Um, so I use this knife sharpener. It's a chef's choice. This is the model. Um, yeah, this is not something they send me or anything. This is when I go fluke fishing with my friend Rick. Every time I come back from fishing, um, they don't want me cleaning the boat, so I get to fillet the fish. And the knives are always so sharp, so I asked them what he uses. It's this. So I put it on my Christmas list, and this is what I now use. Um, it's just dynamite. You read the instructions. It works great. All right, so these are all cut up, ready to go. So I'm going to season these before I run them through the batter. And um, just you know, some ground sea salt. And, and look, you know, you can pick whatever seasonings you like. This is just what I choose to do. 
um, some ground pepper, and it just you know gives it a little more flavor, especially the salt. And you know, again, this is to taste whatever you are comfortable with doing, and and that's it. It's ready to go into the batter. All right, the batter could not be easier. This is complete pancake mix and it's just important it doesn't matter the brand it just matters that you get complete and all you need to do is add water you beat it up into something that's kind of like pancake batter and you're good to go you just need to run the fillets through the batter uh and then into the oil and so let's just do a couple of those um you know i did not invent this recipe i got this i believe it came out of the fisherman magazine years ago i think it was angelo peluso's recipe uh, I think about the only thing I do differently is I don't recall if he seasoned the fish in advance, but uh, yeah, I, you know, I read that recipe and said, yeah, I can do that. Now that's really simple. Um, so yeah, I'll just going to run all these guys through here and, and coat it and uh, see the fish is nice and firm. At this point, I've probably lost track of what's sheep's head and what's trout, but can actually tell when you eat it because it flakes a little bit differently. So Larry, let me run through the rest of this and then we'll get into the, the next step. Okay, now all you need to do is put it in the oil. Now the oil is peanut oil. Uh, I always use that. It's got a um, higher smoke point than other oils. Very important is to use an electric fryer where you can control the temperature and I run it up around 375, 380 degrees. And uh, yeah, I'm not even sure the brand of this, a Presto. I really like this. I've got one up north and one south. Uh, it's nice and big, controls the temperature well. And uh, you know, from here it's pretty easy you, know, you just drop in the pieces in they're all nicely battered um, you know I've tried using pans and, and skipping the electric fryer but it's just hard to do because if you don't control the temperature you end up burning stuff or it doesn't get done enough and uh, you know I just feel like the um, electric fryer is a big help for doing fried fish What I like about this one is it it holds a lot, and um, you know it's typically you don't want to crowd. But you know, on the other hand, I'm going through this much work. I love to have leftovers, so I'm gonna put a lot in here. The oil's nice and hot; it will do just fine. Okay, it's been about three minutes. There we go. Nice. Looking for that golden brown color. There it is. Okay, so that was about another three minutes of which uh, I spent the time actually, I was cleaning up and I've pretty much cleaned up the kitchen from that because what's, you know, what's to it? You rinse off a few things and you're done. And these guys come out perfect. And really the, the perfection I give a lot of credit to the electric fryer because it just kind of does things right. And, uh, you know, you see me putting them on a paper towel. It's not the best way. A, a, a rack would be better. I just don't have one at this house. And up north I use a rack and uh, do it that way. But this comes out just fine as well. So you almost can't mess this up. Okay, and that's it. It's all done. It is just so delicious. It works with so many different kinds of fish. Um, whether I'm doing fluke, uh, flounder, porgies, whatever, um, this is how I do it, even blackfish. And uh, it comes out great. Couldn't be easier. Place is all cleaned up. And uh, what more could you ask for? Okay, if you like this video, please oh, hit yeah. the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please Four subscribe and hit that notification bell. Check out my online courses at saltstrong.com skinner. And don't forget my new book, Fishing the Edge. Take How many of those? Four or five? Available at johnskinnerfishing.com and on Amazon.